worship. This is our youth-led worship. Thank you, Eliza. Yeah, it's very small. Do you want to say welcome? Okay, that's good. Okay, we're going to sit down now. Okay, we're going to do our announcements first. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. On this very special Sunday, October 27th, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, we are excited to be here with you leading worship. My name is Kate, and our youth, we've been working really hard, well, we've been having fun, truthfully, in Sunday school, learning about God's great abundance and using a Sunday school series that's called the Abundant Life Garden Project that actually comes from our friends, I think over on 2nd Street, you know that beautiful church with the red door? It's an Episcopalian resource, but it is lovely. So I hope we've really been enjoying it and hopefully you'll enjoy uh, learning a little bit about the abundance of God's great love and life. And it also has to do with harvest. After worship, we're going to have a potluck, a harvest potluck. We would like all of you to come and join in in the potluck. Whether you brought something to contribute or not, please come join us. So I have a few announcements to share with you. Um, after our church potluck, in fact, it might even start during once we're seated, we've started eating and had a nice time to visit, we're going to have a very special congregational meeting, and we really uh, implore you to stay. Please stay, because we're discussing some very important ideas and possibly transitions for our church. So please join us to eat and stay for our congregational meeting. John has worked really hard on a beautiful presentation. It's pretty slick, so we hope, we hope you'll stay. By the way, we'll be out of there before the lions kick off. Oh! <laughs> Before the lions kick off. Okay, very good. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Liz wants us all to know that fourth quarter newsletter articles are due tomorrow on Monday. Ooh, I haven't gotten to say that. It's due tomorrow, Monday. And I haven't said that in a while. Okay, uh, bizarre set up is still happening. It started and it's happening all week. Tomorrow it will be at 12. So this is Monday. We're going to be setting up at noon. And then Tuesday through Friday, setup will be at 9 a.m. So if tomorrow you're available at noon and can come help with Bazaar Setup, please come on and lend a hand. Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. Sherry, Joe. And everybody would be so appreciative if you're able to help set up um, because our bazaar is next Saturday, November. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Oh, boy. Okay, this is the true gift of being a church attendee. Insider information, Liz said it. You may start. Okay, I will read it. Liz says that starting today, <laughs> okay, you may please start the bidding on the silent auction item. So get a jump start. Start your bidding today, except for the one that Pastor Liz really wants. Don't bid on that one. <laughs> okay, it has been read. It has been read. Uh, we have started already with Dear Sarah Helgi, our cantata practice for our Christmas cantata. This week, it's women only, October 30th, Wednesday at 8 p.m. after our band book group. And this one's also big. Again, Bazaar is November 2nd. From when to when, Joanne? 10 to 2. So come shop. Say hi to people, come help at the tables, talk to Joanne, Sherry, anybody. Um, Also, there are soups that you can take out, so come get your lunch, delicious soups. And uh, on that Sunday after the bazaar, so next Sunday, you guys, we are not gonna have Sunday school, but instead, if you want to bring your allowance and Spend, do even more shopping with all the many bizarre items that might still be, or some of the bizarre items that might still be left, you can do that, okay? We'll just enjoy fellowship and the bizarre things, okay? Next Sunday. So no Sunday school next Sunday. And then 
John Gumper has something else to share, and then we'll get rolling. So last week I was talking a little bit about um, mechanics of stewardship um, and turning in pledge cards and things like that. Um, today I just want to um, talk about a couple things around that. Um, for those of you who, who know me well, um, you'll find that I am perhaps, perhaps the world's worst sports fan that does have a Y chromosome. Um, but there's going to be a sports metaphor in here anyway. Um, one of the things that is true, I, I was talking last week about just how, how much this congregation means to me, partly through its diversity um, and partly through its cohesiveness. Um, and one of the things that's true about stewardship is that, in fact, um, what we give to the church to support it um, depends on our, per our personal situation and our personal situation at the time. You know, one of the things that's true is we go through financial ups and downs, and perhaps our giving needs to be influenced by financial ups and downs, particularly sometimes the downs. Um, and and some, of the, um, some of the times we, um, you know, are, are blessed beyond measure and maybe can do a bit more to help out our particular congregation. And... The thing that I, I was thinking about is I was thinking about this, and this is really stupid because I don't do sports metaphors all that much, but my daddy was a Lions fan and a Tigers fan because he lived in Michigan, okay? And th there was no other good reason for it, um, although that did include the 68 Tigers, so yeah. Um, but anyway, one of the things that's been true for the Lions this year is that they've had this absolutely stunning second year tackle by the name of Aiden Hutchison, who broke his leg really badly a couple weeks ago and is out for the season. And when they asked the coach, how are you going to deal with that? He said, well, next man up. You know, we, we adjust, we all step in, and we do what we need to do to keep things going. And that's what they did. They went out and won the next game. Started out a little slow, but went out and won the next game without Aiden Hutchison. And that that's kind of what we need to do too. You know, there are times that people in the congregation can't do as much to support the congregation. There are times they can. Um, and so when I talk about prayerfully considering what it is that you might be able to give to the congregation for the coming year, um, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Don't just do the same thing we've always done necessarily, unless that's the right thing to do. You know, people that maybe are on a fixed income, maybe that's exactly the right thing to do. But think about where you are and what God's given you and what you can do to give back. The other thing that, um, that I should note as we're talking about this is that, in fact, what we have given as a congregation um, has not quite made it for the last couple of years, and we've had to be borrowing from an endowment, which is unfortunately not like, you know, um, the University of Michigan endowment that seems to be somewhat limitless um, and getting lots of, lots of endowment income as well as endowment outgo. So anyway, we've been actually draining down our endowment. And so as you consider what it is that you might be able to do this year, please keep those two things in mind. Do what you can do and think about whether maybe there's a little bit more somewhere. Thanks. Thank you. 
in the call to worship. <clears throat> Welcome. Welcome to our harvest table where God's love is abundant. Come, for around this table you will find community, family. Come. <laughs> Come not because you have to, but because you need to. Come not to prove you are saved, but to see the courage to sow seeds God has planted to follow where Christ leads. Come not to speak, but to listen, not to hear what's expected, but to be open to the way the Spirit moves among us. Let us be joyful, not somber, for the Creator God invites us to this table and harvest celebration and feast, where the broken are molded to a beloved community where we know because God welcomes all, we are all welcome here. Where a celebration of our evil's defeat has already begun. Please remain standing and join us in singing hymnal number 63, All Things Bright and Beautiful. Great and small, all things. 
please join us in our prayer of confession. Please remain standing. This day we join with the saints and the angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to you as we sing hymn number 54, For the Beauty of the Earth. The peace of the Lord be always with you. This is the time in our worship where we pass the peace to one another. And I apologize to anyone viewing at home if we're not perfectly respecting the cameras. But we can all, kids, let's wave to this camera. Yay! 
everybody who can, wave to that camera. And then we're gonna wave to this camera up here, everyone. Peace be with you, those who are viewing online. And uh, if you would, take a moment to share and pass the peace with those around you. If you wanna share what you're dressing up for as Halloween, you can do that too. <laughs> Jerry. Hello. Oh, there, now it's on. We're going to try it again. Our first reading is from Psalm 104, verses 1, 13 through 15, and 25 through 32. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O the Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty from your lofty abode. You water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his work, who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. Amen. Look 
Auto. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you criticize and attack each other, be careful that you don't destroy each other. I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do, who do corrupt things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is... Spirit is... Okay, what is... Oh, I forgot about this, Jeb. Hold on. I need coconut. Oh, yeah, not quite yet. Okay, the fruit of the Spirit is... What are our fruits? Love. Love joy. joy. Peace. peace patience, kindness, kindness goodness, 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 faithfulness, faithfulness gentleness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Is it on? Yeah, there we go. Now it's on. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so whew, for the last two months, and let's maybe we'll stand a little bit away from the table. Yeah. For the last two months, we have been learning about God's abundance, right? And our whole Sunday school lessons have been called Abundant Life and then the Garden Project, right? Could one of you, and actually, um, here, I'll just do this. Could one of you tell me, what does it mean to be abundant? Or what's abundant, again? Abundant is like um, the sun and the water. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did talk about that. What else, you guys? A lot. A lot, yeah. Did you want to say anything else? Abundance means a lot, right? A lot and for sure enough, right? We talked about enough and a lot. Okay, great. And so we have learned about how God abundantly provides for us, right? But we, and we've talked about how with God's abundance, we've talked about water and soil that help make seeds grow and the plants grow so we can harvest things and enjoy our harvest, right? But God also has probably even more importantly, lots of abundant, what? Life, abundant life, and whoops, oops, you guys can hold. What, Sylvia? Yeah. Um, abundant love. Abundant love, yeah. Can you guys show the hearts? 
Yeah. Abundant love. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Very good. Oh, thank you, Carl. Perfect. Okay. Well, so in Sunday school, with that abundant love and all the abundant things that God has provided for us, we've talked, one thing, Kevin did a really cool lesson about soil, but we've talked about that the soil in us really is inside our very own hearts, right, awesome, inside our very own hearts, and that God plants seeds in our hearts, and us, these special seeds that we've focused on are called the fruits of the spirit. The fruits spirit. of the spirit. Okay, so I showed everybody Kevin's grandma, Grandma Van, who was so dear to us. She, when Kevin graduated from either high school or college, she did a little uh, embroidery. Do you remember I showed that to you guys that said the fruits? It had all the fruits of the spirit embroidered so Kevin could remember them. But then, as an <laughs> as an adult. My friend Terry Sluice, Ron's wife, who's no longer with us, she made something that hangs in my kitchen. And Carl, did you see this? I want everybody to see this. This hangs in my kitchen, and Terry Sluice made this, and it has the fruits of the Spirit on it. They might be in a little different order, but let's read them again. What is the, do you know what that one says? Um, Here, we'll do another one for you. What does that one say, Eliza? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. And it even has a verse that goes with it. So if you want to look at this later, there are beautiful verses that go with each one. So faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. What does that one say? Um, love. Good. And Joy. Um, peace. Peace. Good. Patience. Kindness. And goodness. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So we can turn around again. We can put the hearts down, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. And then, Matthias, will you pick up that other set? Yeah. To that. No, the next one. Are you? Yeah. And then, Eliza, can you pick up that set? Okay. One other thing we talked about, though, is just like fruits and vegetables that we might eat or harvest, some of them have to have things taken off them. What's a fruit or vegetable that needs something pulled or taken away first? Um, the stem of like a tomato. Good, good. The stem of a tomato? An uh, orange. An orange peel? Um, the pumpkin seeds. <laughs> the seeds may be taken out of the pumpkins. We can eat them sometimes, but we have to roast, take them out, and then roast them, yeah. And then what's, what's on the basket there? Um, Corn. 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 Ooh, corn. Yeah, corn. Corn. We can shuck the corn, right? And, um, oh, under there we can peel a... Banana. Yep, yep. So we talked about how sometimes we need to shuck or get rid of some things uh, in order to gain access to the fruits and the spirit in our heart. Okay, and so Eliza, can you hold up? These are some of the things that, like a peel or a, a husk, or something that we don't want to eat, we can try to shuck these out of our heart, mind, spirit, soul, right? Can you hold those up and we'll say them together? Blame, right? We can get rid of blame. We don't need that. That gets in the way of our fruits of the spirit. Body. Oh, yeah, no, we're not going to shuck that. Yeah, what's that one say? Fear. Fear, yeah. Fear. Angriness. Yep. Anger, angriness. Good. Oh, this is, yeah. Sadness sometimes just happens. Yeah. But this one. Shame. Shame. Yeah. We don't need those. If we can, when those pop up, if we can shuck and get rid of those, that helps us access our fruits of the spirit more. Um, okay. And where these fruits of the spirit, we've talked about, like we can share them in our attitudes and actions, and where can we share them? So you're gonna hold those up, Matthias, and you guys can read those. We can share them. At home. At home with our families. At church. You can hold it up so people can see it. Okay, at, church. at church. Yeah, good. Where else? Oh, what's that one? At a hotel. Yeah, at our house, and? 
At school. At school, yeah. And then the last one, my printer didn't work on my last ones. What does that one say? Um, in all the corners of the world. Yeah, in all the corners of the world. So we can sh shuck those things home. home with our family, school, at church, in all the corners of the world. We can share those amazing home. fruits of the Spirit. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, do you want to put them down here, Carl? Because we're going to do our song next. Okay. Um, I think one other thing we'll just share. We talked about how like meditation and prayer can sometimes help us get rid of those things like anger and shame and blame and fear. Um, but what are some things that can help us feel really joyful, feel kind and good, that can help us access those fruits of the Spirit? What are some of the things that make you feel joyful? Oh, well, when Papa looks me. What? When Ginger looks me. When Ginger looks at me. Oh, Ginger, your puppy looks at you? Oh, <gasps> yeah. Licks you? Oh my gosh. Dogs, dogs really can help us access fruits of the Spirit. I gave Liz a book that's all about the fact that the word dog, spelled backwards, is? God. God. I know. Sometimes our dogs, we can find a lot of God and fruits of the Spirit in them, or they can help us access God and fruits of the Spirit. Talking to a, tr a trusted adult. Talking to a trusted adult. That's so nice. What else can help us access our fruit to the Spirit? Playing outside. Awesome. Playing outside. We tried to get outside in Sunday school, didn't we, this time? Um, like doing something nice for someone. Awesome. Doing something nice for someone? Most definitely. And sometimes having fun and singing, too, right? Singing can be really joyful. Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to wrap up this part of our service with a special song that I can thank the Dabani family for introducing to me, and we're going to sing it together. It might get a little raucous. I'm going to invite Jess, the mama of the Dabani's, the Rasga Dabani's up here, and Jess, not to put you on the spot, but do you mind sharing how and why this song came into your lives? I would love to, because it, it throws my children under the bus. Case in point, it was the summer of, it was the summer of 2021, and we were traveling to Grand Marais, Minnesota, which is like a 12-hour ride. And it's possible that some people within our family were demonstrating a difficult time with manifesting and praying for, this, with, for the, with the fruits of the Spirit. So we found this song and we sang it ad nauseum to like get in our beautiful, malleable brains the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, awesome. So we have a couple props and then we're going to do our best. So if you guys want to get your props, you've got your yours. Prop. That's this, your, the thing you're going to hold up, okay? Okay, awesome. Okay, and you guys are going to join in. Are we ready? Matthias, or Jess, do you want to hold that for Matthias? I would love to. Okay, okay, ready? And you guys are going to sing too. Okay, here we go. And you guys can look at the words here. Ready, Carl? <laughs> It's not a banana. The fruit of the spirit's not a banana. Want to be banana? You might as well hear it. Can't be a fruit of the spirit. Fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self. I'm so fast. Watermelon. So the spirit's not a watermelon. The watermelon. You might as well hear it. Can't be a fruit of the spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, oh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Not a, not a lemon. Not a lemon. Lemon. So hear it. Be fruit of the spirit. Okay, so, oh my goodness, that concludes our Fruit of the Spirit section of worship, and really that was our message, so thank you everybody. We'll clear some of this up right now. Okay, so the next part of our worship, this is kind of getting us ready for our harvest potluck and gathering, but Alice and Ava and Yael have been doing such a good job, and Eliza, too, of helping us with reading, everybody. We're going to together ask you to please, if I'm, yep, okay, get out. Oh, wait, I guess we have a song. We have another song. What is it? It is called For the Fruit of All Creation. Should we ask them to sing with us, and then we'll do our blessings? Yeah, okay, we're going to do one more hymn. So if you would join us in not the singing of the crazy fruit of the spirit but in for the fruit of all creation hymn number 527 Forgive me for not speaking into the microphone. This is now when we are going to share in the blessing of the harvest. So we'll come over here. And we ask you to join us. So on the page that says blessing of the harvest. Creating God, 
You have given seed for the shops, for the sour, and bread to the people. Nourish, protect, and bless the seeds which your people have sown in hope. By your loving and beautiful giving, may they bring forth the fruit in due season. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Prayer for the soil. Giver of life, we give you thanks that the richness of the soil nature awakens you call to spring. We praise you for the smell of freshly tilled earth and the beauty of the cleanly cut furrow and well plowed field. We ask you that you help us to be good stewards of the land in the name of the one who gives us new life, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Prayer for water and rain. Prayer for water and rain. Sustaining God, we receive the fruits of the earth from you. We give you thanks for the smell of the earth after rain, for its welcome cooling and its necessary hydration for the land. We ask that the rain come as often as it is needed so the crops may flourish and the coming harvest be indeed bountiful. Prayer for the harvest. <laughs> Almighty and everlasting God, creator of all things and giver of all life, let your blessing be upon this harvest and grant that its bounty may serve your glory and nourish your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, I think I'm still on. Uh, Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us a tasks which we demand our best effort, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. And above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the examples of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to life, to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know him and make him known and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. And then on the back, these are the prayers of the people. And again, thank you for participating with us. Our wonderful readers are going to read those. Let us pray. Eternally gracious creator, as we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. Bless all those, Lord, who suffer because of the greed of others. Help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly so everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect, and prepare our food. For those shopkeepers and transport delivery drivers, the processors and the farmers, bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work both at home and in their countries place us in a greater desire to buy local products and fairly traded goods wherever we are able to so as so that everyone can work with dignity and there will be no more poverty lord of all creation hear our prayer 
At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees, and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources so that there will be clean water, clean air, and plenty of wild birds, mammals, and insects to maintain the ecological balance of the earth. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. As we give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land, we are conscious so much we are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we so we give thanks so we give thanks too for your grace and patience with us when we fail to look after your world as we should. Help us to change so that we too become a new creation walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we ask you for your blessing on our families, friends, and neighbors, on those who are sick and those who have died. Help us recognize the independence of all life and the, and the importance of just relations and responsible stewardship of all you continue to give us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. Let us now name before God those for whom we offer our personal prayers, either silently or aloud. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our company and welcome to the Lord Jesus Christ.
I just quickly want to thank you. I forgot to also tell you that you'd be invited in reverse offering. So that was that was the kids' offering of dried apples, uh, harvested and dried by Kevin. Okay, please join me in our prayer of dedication. We thank you, God, for the many, many gifts you have given us. We thank you for the water, for the seeds, for the soil, and for the times of harvest. We pray that we can seek and serve Christ, others by sharing and making wise use of our gifts and harvests. Let us be the hands and feet of Christ in serving the hungry, the thirsty, the lonely, and the lost, and each other. Amen. And if you'd remain standing and join us in our final hymn, God of the Fertile Fields, number our service before uh, we give the benediction and a quick little prayer that will kick off our harvest potluck downstairs. I really want to thank all of our youth and will you say your name and tell us what you're going to be for Halloween if you're dressing up. What's your name? Carl but I'm going to be Batman. Okay, thank you Carl. <laughs> Eliza and I'm going to be a vampire. Thank you Eliza. Sylvia and I'm going to be same as her. Two vampires in the house? Watch out. Okay, thank you, Sylvia. Matthias, I'm gonna be Ronaldo. Who? R Ronaldo. Oh, the, oh Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Oh, yeah. Okay, kick it. Um, I'm Alice, and I'm gonna be a basketball player. Okay, sweet. I'm yeah, oh, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna be, but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm Ava, and I'm dressing up as my mom. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kevin. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ava, Yael, Alice, Matthias, Sylvia, Eliza, and Carl. Thank you so much. Okay. This is our benediction. Let us go into the world with grateful hearts, sharing the gifts of abundant life and the fruits of the Spirit with everyone we meet. And this is our little prayer for our harvest potluck. We really, really hope you'll stay. 
and it goes like this. We thank you, Lord, for the many, many gifts you have given us. We thank you for water, for seeds of every kind, and for the many varieties of soil, for all the animals, including those that Liz blessed, that enrich our lives, and for this time of harvest. We pray to you, to, we pray for your help to always seek and serve Christ in others by sharing and making wise use of our harvest. Let us be the hands and feet of Christ. Oh, we did that already. Maybe this is the same prayer. Well, we're just going to call it the same prayer. So let us be the hands and feet of Christ in serving the hungry, thirsty, the lonely, and the lost. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's go eat. <laughs> we're going to get... Ha, ha, ha.